Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandar, Principal Scientist at Indian Veterinary Research Institute in Jatnagar Bareilly in Uttar Pradesh. I will be talking about livestock breeding, living conditions and feeding under organic management. Livestock breeding, feeding and management is very important aspect in organic animal husbandry. So livestock breeding coming to breeding aspect in organic animal husbandry, we have to keep in mind while choosing the breed that it should be well adapted to the local conditions. There is no restriction on kind of breeding on, we can keep exotic breeds, indigenous breed or even pure breeds from the outside and any kind of breed it can be kept. But we have to see that it should be well adapted to the local conditions, local resources. It should be adaptable to local climate and socio-economic conditions also. Say for example, if a small scale farmer is there and he is trying to raise livestock, he cannot keep large size body sized animal often because his resource regime is very limited. So in such conditions he has to raise a livestock breed which he can maintain on whatever available he can land he is having. So in that case, so best thing would be if he is rearing the local indigenous cattle and the breeds which are well suited to his socio-economic conditions and his resource regimen. So, and the breed should also be resistant to diseases. It has been seen that when a, a small scale farmer is trying to raise one exotic large size animal, so he is often not able to maintain an animal is also susceptible to disease because of the adverse climatic condition. Because exotic breeds are mostly from the temperate region and then when in the heat, heated, heat, heated environment and uh, uh, where there is climatic conditions are very adverse. So, these uh, di uh, disease, these animals they become susceptible to many diseases. So, we have to keep in mind that it should be a breed should be well adapted so that and it should be resistant to many diseases also. Some of the disease it has some of the uh, breeds it has been seen that they are quite resistant to many diseases while many other breeds are they susceptible to diseases. The moment they face or encounter any adverse climatic conditions or stressful situation, they, they are vulnerable to several diseases. At the same time, certain diseases are very, certain breeds are very hardy, they can do well under adverse conditions. So, breeding methods should also be very consistent to the uh, principles of organic farming. We should not go for kind of embryo trans uh, transfer technique and we have to make it as far as possible natural breeding methods. So, but artificial insemination is permitted in case of breeding. So, but other embryo transfer technology and other uh, advanced method or where there is a lot of technology is involved, such breeding methods are not preferred under uh, organic systems. So, livestock and poultry should be born preferably in a organic, organic units where already organic uh, program is going on and organic production is going on and the offspring is born into that holding, it is preferred under organic systems. So, but transfer from non-organic to organic is not permitted. Under normal situations, we should not bring animal from the non-organic holdings to organic holdings, it is not permitted. If at all it is transferred, so, under livestock has to undergo conversion process. It has to be maintained for certain period of time in the organic, under the organic management, then only it becomes uh, eligible to be called at organic. Certificate, certification bodies may allow transfer of uh, livestock, generally livestock from non-organic holding to organic holding are not transferred. So, but it can be permitted by the certification body under certain circumstances like flood or maybe other natural disaster condition where the uh, stock is depleted in the organic holding and the farmer can bring in stock from the non-organic holding. This, this is an exceptional case. 
So, selecting beads which are well adapted to local condition do well under organic management. So, it is well established that while selecting the bead, we have to keep in mind that it should be well adapted to local conditions. So, here I would say that sometimes people have this belief that under organic production systems, only those breeds which are indigenous are allowed and exotic breeds are not allowed, crossbreds are not allowed, people believe like that. It is not the case. Any kind of breed can be raised under organic management. It can, it could, can be exotic, it can be crossbred, it can be indigenous. But if you look at the condition, the, what the standard says that breed has to be well adapted to the local and local conditions, well adapted to local uh, situations. So, under if we look at this particular standard in organic management of livestock, local, well adapted to local condition mean most of the indigenous breeds which are localized and they are well adapted to local situation, they do well under this system. This is why and this on the organic uh, production system, many a time local breeds are being preferred over the exotic breeds, though there is no restriction in uh, keeping any kind of breed any kind of species, but the species as well as the breed should be well adapted to the local condition. Brought in livestock and poultry under certain circumstances may be allowed as I told previously, what are these uh, circumstances, there are when the producer is establishing an organic and poultry operation for the first time. So, it happens that suppose today you want to establish an organic farm you will not be having your own organic, organically raised animals. Under that situation, you will have to bring livestock, maybe livestock and poultry from other farms. So, in that organic farms, you can introduce to your farm and also the, even if you are having livestock, you have to convert them to organic. You have to, at that time, this is, so you while establishing the organic farm, you can, for the first time, you can bring and introduce the livestock from the conventional farms and, but you have to follow the standard subsequently for certain period of time as per the requirement of the conversion period. When the producer want to change the livestock and poultry breed strain or when new livestock and poultry specialization is developed. Say for example, it, ha it has, it, it is the case when you are having a particular breed or a species of animal, now you want to change it to some other species or breed. At that time also it is permitted that you can bring animals from the non-organic holding. Third condition is for the renewal of herd due to high mortality of animal caused by the catastrophic circumstances. So, when animal die in large number at that time your stock is depleted, you can bring in animals from the non-organic holdings. So, and the when the producer wishes to introduce breeding males into the farm, some, some, sometime you want to bring male of the good, good pedigree just to improve your stock, at that time also you can bring it. In all such cases, product of such animals that qualify for organic only after completion of conversion period is specified under these standards. So, it is allowed, it is allowed that animals can be brought in from the non-organic holding, but it will have to face the conversion period. After that passing of that conversion period for the different species, it is different uh, number of months or the years. So, you have to pass on the that conversion process, then only these animals will be eligible to called organic. So, so now coming to the feeding aspect. So, livestock that are produced under organic management must have their total ration that is comprised of agriculture products including pasture, forage and crop that are organically produced and handled organically. It is very important aspect. So, when you are having organ, doing organic animal husbandry and when you are producing livestock following the organic management procedure, it then in that case you have to feed them organically produce feed and fodder. Sometime, sometime it, it looks very complicated because two standards you have to comply, organic animal husbandry standard as well as crop production standard. When you are growing crops, so you will have to follow the standard for the organic crop production. It means that no chemicals are applied into that and all the principles and practices of organic crop production are followed in producing the fodder and feed for animals. So, you have to feed and forage and whatever it is there, so it should be naturally produced. So, so it is not on inorganic, but there is certain allowance. Suppose you are starting a new farm at that particular time up to 20 percent of the uh, 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 feed and fodder you can bring in from the non-organic holding, but initially, but if your organic management plan should suggest that in certain years of uh, period, certain after certain time, you should be self-sufficient. 
you producing your own, you should be producing your own forage, forage or feed and fodder organic by following organic procedure and you should be self reliant. In case you are not having that on farm availability, you can buy it from the other neighboring farms and also from the region where there are some organic production of feed and fodder, you can bring it and you can buy it and feed to your animals. Then coming to the living conditions. So, once you have taken care of breeds, selecting the proper breed which is well adapted to local conditions, then you have fed them organically produced, uh, produced feed and fodder and then forages which are required in the required quantity because it is also very important animals should not be underfed, they should not be poorly fed, they should be given very good balanced ration because it is also animal husbandry, organic animal husbandry is welfare oriented. If you are keep, keeping your animal under a starving condition, that is not justified under organic management of livestock. You have to feed them well as per, as per their requirement. They should be, they should be fed the ration which is required physical for, to meet their physical, physical, physiological condition. So, or an organic livestock or poultry producer must create and maintain living condition that accommodate natural behavior and health of the animal. Paying full regard to their evolutionary adaptation, behavioral needs and animal welfare issues and with respect to nutrition, housing, health management, because every animal has certain natural tendency. In case of pigs, they are having some some uh, some kind of behavior which is very particular to that particular species. So, then we have to provide that uh, atmosphere to the animal otherwise they feel stressed. So, so you might have seen pigs sometime they poke their nose into the water. So, if you are not allowing that kind of behavior to pigs they will feel stressed because they are not uh, able to express their natural behavior. Likewise, every species have certain tendencies, sometimes behavioral pattern. So, we should also allow them. And also in case when we are housing the animal, so tethering is not allowed, tying with the rope is not allowed usually. So, that is that is also that should need to be followed and generally loose housing system is considered very good where animals are kept in open. So, housing is not that particular important, but so, in case you are keeping animals in the loose housing system in white or in open area, but to just to protect them from the heat and also the other uh, in the rain. So, you have to provide them shelter that is very important for them and then so tethering should be avoided as far as possible. So, the living condition must include access to outdoors. So, all the time animal cannot be kept inside the house, it should be provided opportunity to come out of the shelters, so that they can roam around and they can then also for exercise purpose, it is also very important, shade has to be provided, shelter has to be given, they should get opportunity to get fresh air and they should also have opportunity to have direct sunlight. If all the time you are keeping animals inside the house, there that sunlight they will not get and sunlight is also very important for their good, good living. They should have access to pastures in case of ruminants especially. So, we should be having, they should be having access to pasture where they can graze on for certain period of time. Generally, they, it is said that 4 hours of grazing period or their access to pasture is very important. So, that they will also have exercise, they can have movement and then they can, they, then they can go back to their shelters and when they, they, that opportunity has to be there. Farmers should see that there is sufficient free movement with accessibility to fresh air and natural daylight besides protecting the animal from harsh climate condition that is heat, cold and rain. So, it should not happen that we are leaving them when there is extreme heat outside and we are making, we are not giving them shelter uh, facility that is not good under organic management. It should be seen that animal whenever favorable conditions are there, they are able to come out of their shelter, they are move, moving around freely and when there are rain or heat and other uh, cold conditions, they, they have opportunity to go inside and keep, keep and they, they are in a comfortable position. Otherwise, they will be stressed. So, stress animal, so we should not allow conditions which put animal under stress condition. Animal had should freeze access to fresh water to meet its requirement that is also very important. Animals should fresh, they should get opportunity to have fresh water. Generally, uh, human beings they drink 
very safe water, good quality water, but in case of animals, they try to give whatever is available, it is it's not poor quality water, or dirty water and all that kind of thing. That is not generally permitted under organic systems of management. Animals also deserve good quality of water and that should be fresh water. So, and also it is required that some animals are herd animals. Say for example, if you might have seen pigs, they move in the herds and sheep, they move in the herd. So, if we, we cannot keep them in isolated condition, we should not keep in, they should be kept together. Generally of similar age animals, they should be kept together and the animals of different species should not be kept together because uh, the, then their requirement, they feel alienated or sometimes they feel uncomfortable when they are, say for example, if you are keeping cows with goats and poultry inside, sheep inside together in the same shelter, so that that put animal into discomfort. We should try to see that the herd animal, they should be kept together. Tethering as again I am saying that tying of animal is not allowed in organic system. If it is required that, but it's, they should be given sufficient uh, the rope should be of sufficient length to, so that they can move around and as at, at best it should be avoided. Overcrowding should not be done in order to avoid conflict behavior and associated health problems. So, sometime we are having maintaining lot of animals under a very small shelter that is also not permitted and there are a standard, a standard suggests that how much each species of animal at different age and then uh, category, it has a, a, an, it has an allowance, it has a space requirement that is already has been recommended under the organic standards. So, sometime it may be 1 square meter for certain species and breed of animal and can be 1.5 to 2.5 for certain other kind category of animal that has been specified in the standard that can be looked into how much space is required for what category of animal that should be adhered to under the organic systems. So, so specific livestock and poultry ration should, uh, should consider the need of young animal for natural feed such as feeding of maternal length. So, young calf need milk from his or her mother. So, milk from other mammal or milk replacer of organic origin that has maximum similarity with maternal milk can be provided that it, but it should not contain any genetically modified ingredient, antibiotics, hormone, etc. So, whenever we should take care that whenever giving milk to a calf, uh, when it is not getting milk from its own mother, then we should try to find out milk which is in similar in nature, maybe from other cow and maybe similar to it, but it should not be having some uh, antibiotics or hormone. So, it means that it should not be from milk from the uh, cow coming from the non-organic holding. So, conventional, uh, conventionally raised cow's milk should not be given to a cow, calf which is born into an organic holding. S substantial proportion of dry matter and energy in the daily ration should consider consist of roughage, fresh or dried fodder or silage. Need of inclusion of cereals in the fattening phase of poultry and livestock and poultry must have ample free access to water appropriate to maintain full health and productivity. These are certain things we have to keep in mind uh, that the, all the feed stuff which we are feeding to animal, it should be fresh, it should be safe and the water should be uh, should be, should be of good quality, it should be fresh and say and the especially cereals should be provided in case at the time of the fattening phase. Due to reasons of animal welfare, health and productivity, if supplements are to be added, it may be permitted on advice of a qualified veterinarian. It is again very important, whatever feeding stuff we are giving to animals. So, and if in especially when we need to give supplements, when a cow has uh, the pasturation period after that, that time when it has delivered a calf. So, at that time their uh, requirements of feed goes up. At that time we have to see that we have to provide some cereals also, some supplements, feed supplements need to be given, but we have to consult the veterinarian that what kind, what feed stuff should be given to uh, so cow which has delivered calf at that time, parturation uh, after the parturation. The permitted list of such supplement feed materials, probiotics, biologicals, immunologicals and so, this is, these are already listed into the organic standards and process that comply the guidelines under these rules. So, this is, these are available under national program on organic production guidelines. So, you can refer to the NPOP development uh, 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 document, national program on organic production, it has detailed guidelines on what to be fed 
and at uh, which category of animal, what kind of ration to be fed, what are the restricted uh, items, what are the permitted items. So, it should be looked into when, when we are keep, we are going for organic management of livestock, you have to be well aware about these kind of uh, requirements, what they, the especially which are the things which are prohibited and which are permitted. The feed stuff and nutritional components, if you, if you look into the requirements, substances should significantly satisfy feeding requirements of the livestock and poultry, fulfilling physiological, behavioral and welfare needs of the concerned species. So, we have to keep in mind, the, it should fulfill their physiological, behavioral and welfare needs of the concerned species. And such substances should not contain genetically engineered modified organisms what we call GMOs nowadays, these are not uh, permitted and are non-synthetic and, and are primarily of plant mineral medicine. So, that uh, the, the non-synthetic -synth and all these kind of these some certain substances are allowed, some substances are not allowed, we have to see that which are allowed and which are not allowed. The feed itself should not be prepared by using chemical solvents and chemical treatments. So, many feed stuff which are allowed under the conventional production system where we are feeding the animals. So, but these same are not allowed under organic systems be because these are prepared by using chemical solvents and chemical treatment. All the ingredients of the feed including supplements fed to organic animals should be from organic sources. So, again it need to be emphasized that whatever feed material we are feeding to animals, it should be coming from the organic sources. In case of shortage of these substances or in exceptional circumstances, well defined ana analogic substances listed may also be used. So, that is only when there is circumstances are adverse and when the organic feed is not available, then only feeds from the conventional sources are allowed, but that is restricted, that is very special case and that the veterinarian's advice should be taken that what can be fed and under the situation. Feed stuffs of animal origin with exception of milk and milk product, fish and other marine animals and products derived therefore, should not be used. So, Generally, in case of conventional production system, feed stuff of animal origin are allowed, but in case of organic production systems, the feed stuffs of animal origin are not allowed except milk and milk products. The feeding of mammalian material to ruminant is not permitted with the exception of milk and milk products. So, you cannot, this should also be taken into account that we should not feed any material to ruminants which is of the mammalian ori origin except milk and milk products. Synthetic nitrogen or non-protein nitrogen compounds should not be used. So, that is also very important. Sometimes we are feeding urea treatment of straw, urea treated straw to animals. So, that urea, this kind of feed where the uh, nitrogenous circumstances or non-protein nitrogen compounds uh, are used. So, such feeds are not allowed. So, in the organic management, it is very important that diet should be very healthier one and it should be it should be originating from the organic sources. So, agar if it is not uh, coming from the organic sources, generally it is not permitted unless situation warrants. So, we should keep in mind that what are these situation. Again say farmers should feed animals according to physiological requirement, diet should be according to animals natural feeding behavior and digestive need. Something we should not feed that which it, its digestive need is uh, not there and we are trying to feed some time which it does not suit to its uh, physiological needs. Farmers should raise forage crops organically preferably on his own farm. That is the very important consider consideration. Organic animal husbandry is totally land based, landless organic uh, landless animal husbandry is not permitted under organic management. A farmer should invariably be having his own land and he should be growing his own feed and fodder for his organic animals. So, whatever animal he is raising. So, generally if a farmer is landless, he will not be having land to grow feed and fodder for his animals. So, landless animal husbandry is not permitted under organic system of management. That is why a farmer who is having land, he should be growing feed and fodder for his animals also. It should be, it should be taken note of. At times of difficulties and emergencies, feed from conventional farm may be given with a dry matter content of 15 percent, which has to be gradually reduced to 10 percent within 5 years. 
So, no matter if you are starting organic animal husbandry and you are in the beginner, so you can give, you can bring in feed and fodder from the conventional farm. But you have to see that within 5 years, you should be self reliant. You have to be having your own organic feed coming from your own farm. And if it is not available from your own farm, you should be buying it from the other organic farms where organic feed and fodder is being produced. When formulating ration, diet of animals should be balanced by adjusting the protein percentage to complement the forage levels. Suppose sometime the forage quality is not so good, say when you are giving crop residues, so you have to supplement protein sources, so that otherwise it will be imbalanced diet. If an animal is not getting a protein rich diet and sufficient amount of the minerals into its diet, so it will have feed uh, nutritional deficiencies and that will it will make him to vulnerable to certain health uh, problems. So, you have to see that we have to do a balancing act by feeding as per the requirement nutritional requirement of the animal in the organic management system. That is also true in case of the conventional animal husbandry also. It is not that in organic animal husbandry only care is taken for the good feeding of animals. It is true for the conventional also. But here in case of organic management standards are uh, written and then we have to document all the details of the ration fed to the animal. So, we, we have to see that. So, here the written standards are to be complied with. That is why we have to follow the standards in the entirety. Now, growth regulators, artificial coloring agents, urea, medicated feeds, hormones, chemically extracted feeds, synthetic appetizer are strictly prohibited in feeding the livestock of organic farm. So, it is very important. Again, once again, I am emphasizing here growth regulators. Sometime in conventional production system, we are giving stimulants which productivity enhances and then synthetic uh, this thing, some kind of hormone therapy is being given. So, or artificial coloring agents are used, urea used, medicated feeds, medicated feeds are used. So, when uh, most of the purchased inputs, purchase feeds from the market just to improve its uh, uh, level so that they can give quick growth to animals. So, people the medical medicated feeds are coming in the market and people are feeding such feeds, but that is not allowed in case of organic systems. Chemically extracted feeds are also not allowed in the organic system. So, we have to take care that whatever feed we are giving to animals, it should not be chemically extracted. Synth synthetic appetizer should also not be given. So, sometimes people try to give some appetizers to animals which are synthetic in nature. These are strictly prohibited and the list can be checked from the standards document of by National Program on Organic Production and POP documents should always be referred. I would suggest that those who are going for organic production, they should download this document, they should keep that download for their reference purpose. So, any, anything they want to see and to want to check whether they are doing right in case of animal feeding or any other matter, they should refer to this document and then when they are not getting it, they should consult the people, those who knows about organic animal husbandry or keep, keep, keeping of animals on the organic production system. They can consult veterinarians, so, so how to feed their animals well and as per the requirements, whether they are feeding right or wrong, the veterinarian can suggest them. They have to be in touch with the qualified healthcare professional or and to animal service provider who provides uh, give guidance on this one. To supplement the feed of animal plant based pro products, by products of food industry like molasses, fodder preservatives like bacteria, fungal and enzymatic elements, vitamins, trace elements can be added as per requirement. Yes, we should just to enhance the the uh, nutritional uh, trait uh, features of the feed, so these things are permitted. So, again I would say that you can refer the what are the permitted items which can be added to the feed and just to enhance the uh, quality of the feed. So, these plant based products, byproducts of food industry like molasses, fodder preservatives like bacteria, fungal. So, when you are going feed to make silage at that time it is very important that preservatives are used or these are fungal and enzymatic elements, and vitamins, trace elements these are to be added and then uh, parturient cow actually when delivered calf or uh, this one and then when they are giving milk at that time, they are uh, the requirements for the to meet the energy requirement, they need to be fed certain certain specific diet at that particular time where these certain things are allowed and we should see that what are the things which are allowed. Raising of calf is more important as it is the future organic milk animal. We have to take care maximum 
the calf because it is a future organic animal and its feeding should be proper, it should be kept well. Calf be allowed to suckle according to its anima, uh, natural requirement and proper weaning be done unlike in conventional systems. So, we have seen in many a time the calf is weaned away from mother from the day 1 or day 2. So, that is not permitted in the organic system, it should be allowed to live with her mother for certain period of time, it should not be immediately weaned away from the mother. Because now in the western countries lot of research is going on, the advantages of keeping calf together with mother. That has been our ancient practice since it is traditional practice since generations we have seen in our country that the calf is kept with the cows uh, with their mothers for longer period of time. But in many western countries calf is weaned away from the very beginning of life and they are separated from mother. So, now it is being realized calf when living with her mother so uh, or his or her mother so then they, they, they feel their immune system get boosted and mother also feel well. So, this kind of uh, keeping calf together with mother is being preferred on the organic systems of management. So, that is our traditional practice also. So, we have to take care of. In case of emergencies, calf may be given milk from non-organic farming systems or dairy substitutes so long as they are contain nor antibiotics nor synthetic additives. As previously I told that certain situation it may happen that suppose so, so, cow is no longer there and she dies or something happens, sometimes you have to uh, keep calf separate uh, separately, raise it separately from mother because of certain reasons. At that time you can give, but the milk, uh, the milk has to be of similar uh, nature. So, organic livestock, so standards again I am saying that whether you are raising organic livestock or a poultry, standards to be followed that is the key issue. There are well stated standards for origin of livestock, breeding, feeding, management, disease control, processing and marketing of livestock product, organic production system. So, again I am emphasizing because it is highly skill oriented organic animal husbandry, it is highly skill oriented, you have to be very careful about the following standards and maintain the records. So, again I will say that uh, start from the origin of livestock, all animals should be born and raised on organic holding managed under continuous organic management from the last third of gestation or at hatching. So, may after hatching the, the immediately after then all you have to follow the organic standards in case of poultry. And then they should be preferably born into organic holding as previously I told that in case you are not having animals or you are starting a new farm or you replacing the herd you can bring in, but bring an animal from non-organic holding again they will have to undergo conversion period. A beginner can procure calf from conventional farm which are of 4 weeks old that receive cholesterol and pull milk diet. So, you can bring in and these are the conditions. So, again you have to refer back to the standards. Breeding stock to a maximum of early 9 percent can be brought in from conventional farm. So, you can replace. So, under certain circumstances you can bring the entire new stock from the uh, conventional farm and start raising them following the organic standards, but generally normally 10 percent you can bring every year. So, and then you can raise them further under following the organic standard. In case of poultry, animal must have been born or hatched from organic production unit complying with the standards must be the offspring of parent raised under organic uh, conditions set down for a specific period. There is period mentioned that how long it should have spent life in conventional and or the organic for maybe 6 month, maybe certain weeks, maybe for 1 year large remains it could be conversion period maybe 1 year and for the small animals maybe for poultry maybe 6 week and 7 weeks that has been written that how much uh, conversion period is mentioned for each species and breed of animal. Transfer of livestock and poultry between organic and non-organic is not permitted usually, but under what condition it is permitted I have already told about this one. While choosing the breeds, their adaptation to the local climatic and socio-economic conditions and their vitality and resistance to disease must be considered. As I told in the very, very beginning itself, if you are keeping in indigenous animal, our, uh, our uh, local breeds, in case of cows we are having more than our uh, breeds of indigenous breeds, we are, they are characterized breeds and they are, uh, they are uh, well known. And then uh, these, uh, these indigenous breed. So, can be, can be, it will, will do well under organic management. Then again I am saying that 
So, do not have this feeling that you cannot keep exotic animal under organic management, you can keep very well, but the, this should be well adapted, you can very well understand if your local breed is there. So, indigenous breed is there, so that will be doing very well, because they have been living in the current atmosphere in the local situation for generations, they are well adapted. In comparison to the uh, breed which has been brought in from outside and try to raise in the condition where it is not favorable to, to it, because it is generations and traditionally it has not been living in that condition. So, say for example, if you exotic animal which is used to the temperate condition, if you try to raise into a condition where there is dry climate and there is, a, there is adverse climatic condition, so dry and temperate animal will not do well under the dry land conditions. So, then we have to keep in mind that what kind of animals, so we are trying to raise into this, uh, this one. So, we have to see the adaptability of animals into. So, there are certain non-synthetic and synthetic substances that can be used as feed additives and supplements. Again, I am saying that you have to look into dairy cattle allow 20 percent of their feed coming from non-organic sources as I told this thing in the beginning. So, it is not that in the you are starting a new a new farm, new organic farm, organic uh, livestock farm and all of a sudden you will have 100 percent feed and fodder coming from organic sources, it may not. So, that is why this allowance has been given, but this does not mean that for for every time you will uh, follow this uh, 20 percent ration coming from the non-organic sources. Plastic pads, urea, manure, mammalian or poultry slaughter by products are not allowed. So, you have to see that, so by product poultry slaughter or by products are not allowed. Dairy farms should provide a maximum diet from seed stuffs including in carbon feed stuff produced as organic as per the requirement preferably on farm. So, it is said that preferably on farm, sometime it may so happen that your farm not, not be producing required quantity of the uh, fodder from the farm, because land may be limited. You know more than 80 percent of the farms in our country are generally they are less than 1 hectare. Many a time farmers find it difficult to grow fodder crop for the animals, because the land is limited itself for their own uh, requirements to growing cereal crops and vegetables, they do have limited land and they generally they do not cultivate fodder for themselves. But in case of uh, organic production, you have to keep certain land, if you are anyway keeping certain land, so you have to keep uh, the some area reserved for cultivation of green fodder or some kind of uh, feeding. Uh, substances uh, to produce feeding substances on farm, you should have that provision. In case you are not having, you can have some kind of a contract with the farms which are producing organic feed and fodder. Agricultural processed residues of organic origin such as from grain fermentation, fruit processing, vegetable processing are permitted for purpose of feeding provided that are overall feeding practices satisfy the daily energy and nutrient requirements of dairy animals. So, we have to see the dairy uh, requirement of feed should be met from the farm itself. The feed fodder crop intended to be used as feed for livestock and poultry should have been organically grown. Again, I am saying that it should be grown organically following the organic standards for crop production. The product should maintain their organic status provided that remains are fed with at least 80 percent calculated on a dry matter basis. Feed obtained from organic sources that have been produced in the compliance with the organic production guidelines. So, again it is being emphasized the organic production guidelines are well stated, these are well documented, these document can be referred while feeding the animals, while keeping the animal, while, while housing the animals. Restricted percentage of feed stuff not produced according to these guidelines to be fed for a limited time. Yes, it should be kept in mind that it should be for the limited time only. So, you cannot give forever this kind of thing, provided that it does not contain genetically engineered modified organism or products therefore, again it is a condition. If you are giving a food stuff which is, is coming from the non-organic holding, but again it should be seen that it should not contain any genetically engineered or modified organism. That is again very important here that it should be uh, kept in mind. Sometimes some farmers they are very caring to their animal, they are devising use of sprouts in animal diets that is living condition. So, you see that, so fodder should be should be grown in by following the organic standards and the animals should have opportunity to graze and go outside in the field to graze and they should be when the cut fodder they should be given, it should be organic fodder. So, they will they will they will, it should not be 
coming from the non-organic sources. The, we have to keep in mind uh, this this situation. So and then you know the local uh, local breeds. You look, keep in mind, and these are the, our indigenous breeds. So indigenous breeds do well under the, these systems. So now we in the uh, if you look into or other than organic farming, now we have started talking about the natural farming. In the natural uh, in the natural farming, so we are talking a lot about uh, the our, the indigenous cows. The products coming from the, they are making several product of the desi cow. So the, for that reason also now the, there are separate standards are under process of development for the natural uh, production wherein uh, the livestock are important component in the natural farming. Whereas in case of organic farming, it is not necessary that animal has to be there holding. One can go for the organic crop production without having animals. But if you look at the natural farming, the uh, integrating uh, animals, especially desi cow in case of natural farming is a must because so much, so many products are being made of the cow dung in case of natural farming. Whereas in case of this is one of the difference between organic farming and natural farming. So, but in both the cases, they should be having opportunity to grazing they should be about grazing and having feed and fodder. Suppose sometime it happens that we are giving to only crops residues to animals, we, the green fodder is not available. We should see that, we should ensure that the animals are getting the, uh, the feed and fodder as for their physiological need, as for their the nutritional requirement and as for their behavioral needs, they should be kept. Housing should, they should be able to uh, prof uh, pr uh, perform their natural behavior well. So, if you are not there, if they are not able to perform their natural behavior, they feel stressed. So, if you look at these are the the calf from our most of the our uh, indigenous breeds. So, uh, so if you look at these breeds, so these are preferred under organic management. So, again I will say that there is no restriction, you can go for exotic, but think about the adaptability. Adaptability of the desi cows or indigenous cows, our Indian breeds are very good and for the, or that is why they are pre preferred under organic management of livestock. So, we should, we should be very clear about this one. So, we have to see and then we have to again say the adapted adaptability of the animal to the local environment and climatic and socio-economic condition is again very important when we are trying of going for livestock breeding. Socio-economic condition is also very important because if you are a very small scale farmer, you cannot maint large sized animals because your resources, your own resources are very limited. You are not having enough land to cultivate green fodder. So, that you cannot maintain large sized exotic animals though it is permitted, even though it is permitted, you should try to have the our a small size our desi cattle, indigenous cattle if you are starting an organic uh, livestock farm. So, but you have to see and in case you are not having your own uh, fodder arrangement to be grown your own own land, you have to have some kind of a arrangement with the farm which is producing organic feed and fodder. You should be having contract with that farm so that you the uh, animals you are keeping are assured of the required quantity of green fodder, so required for their good maintenance. So, you cannot keep them under the deprived condition sometime in the conventional rearing. So, we think it is a way of life and whatever is animal we are just feeding to the anim animal, whatever crop reduce, crop stables and the straws, these are poor quality and they are not enriched, they need to be enriched with the protein, they need to be supplemented. See so, this poor quality uh, forages, sometime it is not good for the good animal health. So, we have to see that this should be properly supplemented as per the requirements of the organic standards. So, then they should be resistant to diseases. We have seen that the indigenous cattle are many uh, resistant to many of the diseases, whereas the exotic cattle often they are very vulnerable to disease. The moment their feeding, uh, feeding is not well, so they suffer from animal uh, nutritional anemia. So, they, they suffer from many kind of health problems because of the because of the poor nutrition they have. So, we have to take care of their nutrition very well. They need to be given 
very uh, as per the energy requirement as per the nutritional requirement they should be given mineral and they should be given sometime they need to be supplemented some cereals so some pulses are also given that is our traditionally we have been uh, doing at the farm and as far as possible we should see that their entire ration is produced on farm or prepared on farm we should not depend much on the market purchase feed and fodder now especially feeds so the and then we most of the feeds which are available in the market they are medicated feeds and they are not fit for the animals kept under organic management we should be we should see that in, we should make arrangements so that the on farm their requirements are met and they are fed all the ration which are permitted and which are allowed as per the standards uh, of the organic farming so we should see that the that the we should be in touch with the certification agency if you are a certified organic producer we should remain in touch with the certification agency for the proper guidance so we should see that our the animals are uh, are raised as per the requirement and then we if you are not having sufficient awareness about and then we take guidance from the qualified people those who are qualified in these matters so we you can you can look into these document and the literature from the various sources now the how to feed uh animals under organic system you can get package of practices you can find the animal science institutions so now many institutions are developing standards for organic animal husbandry they are having and they are also producing document and this small leaflet and extension material about the feeding under organic management you can be touched with the extension uh, service providers uh, extension agencies and also you can look into Uh, the document should be produced by the certification agencies so as a certified organic producer you will be in touch with the certification bodies so that because they will give you finally the compliance certificate you can be in touch with them and you can take their guidance so i believe that you what i told about the re, uh, feeding of taking care of livestock under organic livestock and poultry under organic management you by following these standards so you can be a successful organic livestock producer provided you are following all these standard prescribed standards and going producing your organic uh, the livestock by organic methods which are as per the prescribed standards so towards the concluding uh, this lecture i would uh, refresh you all about so first we have to choose the breed which is well adapted to the local condition so there is no restriction on exotic breed cross breed or the desi breed any breed you can keep in your livestock under organic management it is all permitted but if you look at the condition that it should be well adapted to local condition and it should be resistant to diseases and it that for for that reason our indigenous breeds are well suited for the production and the organic management so choice of breed is very important aspect if you want to be successful organic livestock producer in case of poultry also you should look for the native poultry birds so they do well under the backyard raising conditions and under the organic uh, poultry production situations so this and the breeding methods should be consistent with the principle of natural or organic farming practices it means that so uh, uh, embryo te uh, transfer technology ett that is not uh, complex breeding techniques are not permitted but you can go for the natural breeding and and also you uh, the artificial insemination is permitted in organic management the when you are starting a new farm new uh, new farm and under on, on organic management at that time you can bring livestock or poultry from the conventional farm but afterwards you have to follow the afterwards once you have brought in the animal you have to follow the organic standards so and also you can in case of when there was some natural disaster earthquake or flood and that kind of a situation or your uh, stock got delete, uh, depleted you can uh, bring an animal from the conventional farm but afterwards you have to follow the organic standards so selecting breed which are well adapted to local condition do well under organic management you should keep in mind that aspect that is very important and then we can under, under certain condition we can uh, bring in animals from outside that is also there so feeding is very important under organic management feed stuff should be grown organically by following in case of organic animal husbandry two standards are to be followed organic crop production standard when we are growing feed and fodder and also animal husbandry standards that is why sometime organic animal husbandry is considered a bit difficult and also landless animal husbandry is not permitted 
under the organic system. You have to have a land, then only you can raise organic livestock and poultry. If you are not having your own land or leased land you are having, you cannot do it. A landless, uh, uh, landless person cannot be organic livestock farmers. So, so, your feed and fodder has to be grown organically, you have to see and the breed has to be well adapted to local condition that, that again I am uh, time and again I am uh, emphasizing and the living condition should be so comfortable. So, if you are providing you have to have to open space also and you should be some grazing area where animal can grow or the poultry can pasture say backyard country system and then the housing should be such that if animal want to go out open into the for, for sunlight and all that kind of it, it can come out and when the, we feel that it, if there is a rain and the hot climate outside it, it need to go inside shelter you should be having shelter in case of the uh, livestock. So, you cannot uh, tether the animal. So, you have to avoid that you can you have to keep them in the open in the loose condition not uh, tying with the rope. So, likewise the uh, you have to uh, see the other condition that it should be uh, very comfortable no, there should not be overcrowding. If there is overcrowding animal will be under a stressful situation and a stressful situation means that it will be become vulnerable to several diseases. So, due to an animal welfare because organic animal husbandry is highly animal welfare oriented. Animal should be able to perform their natural behavior, it should be and it should be fed with the natural diet as per its physiological requirement and nutritional requirement. We have to see feed stuffs and nutritional component, they are the chemical and synthetically uh, drawn feed stuffs are not allowed on the organic systems. So, we have to take note of these, uh, these aspects very much. So, organic livestock and poultry again I would say that standard is the key. So, you have to follow the standard and you have to especially see which are the items which are not per permitted on the organic system and which are permitted on the organic system. So, sometimes leaf fodder, tree fodder, grain fodder this is all allowed. So, this is allowed and we have to see what are the uh, uh, feed and fodder allowed and which are not allowed. So, loose housing system again I would say that this kind of uh, housing arrangement is, is, is preferred under organic system. So, and then the, it has to be uh, less in it also calls for the less investment. So, and then also the uh, plastic material and all that should be in the housing it should be avoided. So, you see this is a very very, very ideal condition for this particular thing then the animal are out and their shed area also available wherever they want to go they can go easily that should that should be seen that it should be then animals should have that freedom of going out and all uh, whatever they want to do. So, I believe that you you can uh, follow yourself the standard uh, very well and then you can go, go for the livestock uh, production under organic management livestock and poultry by following these suggestions. Thank you very much.